Uh, before we ask you about your, your college days, I want to talk about a couple of topics real quick. Uh, one of the topics I want to talk about is um, in Chicago and the Harbor athlete. Right. Um, you know, you, you, you have ties with all both areas. Right. And sure. Gary, you know, I'm pretty sure you give me a good opinion on that. Yeah. A lot of people feel like Coach Todd had favoritism towards the Cayman athlete. Do you agree with that? Uh, not to say nothing bad about Coach Todd, you know what I'm saying, because I love him to death. But he was a Roosevelt man, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you have to look at it in that aspect, you know what I'm saying? Anybody who came up around this area, he already had some type of view on what type of player we were, you know what I'm saying? From when we was in fifth and sixth grade to they first built Central, you know what I'm saying, in 86, 87 year when Eichmann first played in Courtney Battle, which were two other players that were from where? Calumet, you know what I mean? So it's like, it was it was a a black eye on the scene, you know what I'm saying, especially after that uh, Thornton incident, you know what I'm saying, back in 89, you know what I'm saying, and Coach Todd just really start leaning towards players that he can have more close-knit. With him being the East Chicago Northside guy, Coach Todd living out here, he was real close to us, you know what I'm saying, so he can always come to the projects or come to 151 Center or the cage and see us right there up front, you know what I'm saying, and be first hands with us, you know what I mean, as far as the basketball game. Now, you being an athlete, um, and you know, one of the most historic high schools in the Midwest, did you feel like a lot of Harbor athletes were being overlooked because of that, or did you feel like it was, some have Harbor, Harbor athletes that was really good? Uh, well, uh, Harbor athletes were being overlooked, but really they, they was getting kind of looks downstate because they had the K-House, you know what I'm saying? The K-House... They had the, a league within itself, you know what I'm saying? So you played against like the Hammond Boys Club, Gary Boys Club, and Cedar Lake Boys Club back then. And then once you won our region, you went downstate, you know what I'm saying? Played South Bend Boys Club and all type of stuff. So the Harbor guys got that experience to where we only played our small bitty ball league over here at Kerry Gosh. And besides that, it wasn't nothing else. But we had the, uh, what's my man name? Had the green shirts, you know what I'm saying? When we used to have. Four twos versus five threes and stuff. At <laughs> Kerry guys, yeah. that's what we had. You know what I'm saying? To where my man Junior Bridgman had all that stuff at Washington. I mean, at Washington High. You know what I mean? My mom used to take me to that. You know what I'm saying? So I used to get to see all that firsthand too. But uh, the Harbor athletes, man, cramping them. They was great, man. You know what I'm saying? But I got to play with both of them, so I didn't get to see too much of them left behind until probably after I left in college. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. What's the difference between the Gary um, athlete and the East Chicago athlete? What's, what's the difference? An uh, East Chicago athlete, uh... Or, or is there a difference? We're really, it's just, just the pressure, you know what I'm saying? And Gary, it's like, man, it's all your dad's friends, and you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, that's the all-black culture, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like you're supposed to win, you know? It's, you're supposed to win against Munster and Crown Point. You're supposed to kill this dude on the court, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be aggressive against this certain player because they're instilling that confidence in us off top in gear. You know what I'm saying? They're teaching us at 9 and 10 in bitty ball, go at that dude, you know what I'm saying? To us, East Chicago, we didn't have too many people to go at. Who we had to go at was who? Whiting, you know what I'm saying? The, the Bishop No kids or the Eggers kids and stuff like that. They wasn't really in the competition level with us, you know what I'm saying? Probably as one high school, would have, one school like Westside or Block, you know what I'm saying? They'd been more competitive like that. But as far as East Chicago, we was com competitive within ourselves. I think the Project League was the, the best thing that ever happened to East Chicago. Gotcha. The East Chicago athlete and um, basketball are known as slashers. Great athletes, great dribblers. Um, I remember just growing up, man. You know, you're one of the first guys that I ever seen really make your mark behind the, um, the three-point line and also, you know, a mid-range jump shot. Did you purposely do that to have a different type of game, or was it, was it just you? <laughs> really, it was your cousin E, man. E Goins <laughs> and uh, Sam Moore, man, playing at the cage all the time, just playing against them dudes and little two-on-two out time. And shout out to you too, bro. I miss you, man. Uh, me, Al, uh, E, and Sam, we'll play two on two, three on three with Damon Williams and Steve Reese, and and we just shoot jump shots, man, because I was too little. I was only weighing about uh, maybe <laughs> 135 or soaking wet, yeah. so I couldn't even go in there and get knocked to the ground too much, man, yeah. so I had, to, I had to hit me a shot from somewhere, so I pretty much took on to the jump shot, man. I didn't learn how to go to the hole really until like uh, maybe my freshman year in college. Gotcha. Now let's go into the college. Um, 
give us some feedback on your recruiting experience. Uh, I wasn't recruited by nobody, man. Uh, How was that? Pretty much, uh, they, they thought I didn't pass the SATs, man. Uh, it was, uh, I failed my SATs my junior year, but they didn't know I went back and took them my senior year, you know what I'm saying, in the fall semester. But I didn't really communicate with Coach Ty too because I was too much wrapped up in uh, street life and stuff. So once the season got started and uh, scouts started coming, they really wasn't looking at me because they didn't know I had a GPA. The only school that ever looked at me really was uh, Valpo, you know what I'm saying, out of high school. And they wanted me and Trey. Uh, Homer Drew, yeah, great coach, man, great dude. I would have loved, if I knew Bryce was going to go there, man, I'd have went. You know what I'm saying? But I really wasn't focused on that. I really oh, wasn't even focused on going to school after high school. You know what I'm saying? Really, I didn't I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Because we lost and it wasn't really nothing to me, man. Gotcha. So you ended up going to college though, right? Yeah, I ended up going to school. Uh, coach Huppenthal, man. Shout out to Coach Hupp, man. That's a real dude right there. Coach Hutt, man, called uh, this school in uh, Champaign, Illinois, Parkland College. Uh, he was like, man, I got a dude that want to play ball, and uh, I'm surprised that he ain't got nobody to come look for him. But uh, I say if you give him a trial, he'll do right for you, you know what I'm saying? And he ended up sending me, Jason Jackson, and Eugene Morgan down there, you know okay. what I'm saying, to try out, and uh, I, I was success. Good job. How did it go down there? Oh, man. That, hey, listen, if out of anything in basketball, that's my greatest experience ever, man. Because that was the first coach to just let me go. He told me to be me. And he said, don't hold back. Don't do nothing. Shoot the ball. I want you to shoot that ball. You know what I'm saying? We brought you here to do this. You know what I'm saying? I saw you in the workouts. You can do it. You know what I'm saying? You just need somebody to push you to do it. And with that, man, I was... Uh, First team all region 24 uh, in junior college. Uh, I was uh, all American at the uh, national tournament. You know what I'm saying? I averaged 22 a game there. Uh, we finished seventh in the nation that year. Uh, nobody has won more games in uh, Parkland than me. Uh, I went 28 and 8 that year. You know what I mean? And uh, it, hey, it was it was it was great for me, man, because. Anthony Welsh, my assistant coach that used to play ball at the University of Illinois, my uh, my head coach, Mark Bill at the time, my freshman year, went on to be the assistant coach at the University of Illinois under uh, uh, Coach Lou Henson, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, man, he just taught me how to play ball, man. He said, put it in the hole, and that's all I did. Got you. Now, after you did that, did you have any um, pro opportunities overseas, uh, uh, CBA, NBA, anything? Well, not, uh my sophomore year, you know, so we lost in uh, the regional uh, semifinal game. After that, you know, what I'm saying I uh, I got shot, you know, what I'm saying later on that year at my school, you know, what I'm saying guys was coming up. I was into a lot of other things, you know, what I'm saying gang banging and so forth. And so they actually came to my school and they shot me. And so when they shot me, you know, what I'm saying I I lost function of my hand, you know, what I'm saying I couldn't use my hand, so I couldn't go play ball for nobody the next year, you know what I'm saying, I lost my scholarship, I had scholarship opportunities for St. Louis and uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham, and Tennessee, Chattanooga, you know what I'm saying, I refused the uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham, and the Tennessee, Chattanooga at the beginning of my freshman year, going into my sophomore year because we had Dwayne Jones coming in from East Chicago to play on the same team with us over there at Parkland, so we was top five team in the nation, so I was looking to play at Tennessee, you know what I'm saying, University, but they ended up firing away in Houston. Yeah. So I, I said I'd rather stay in junior college and just go through that. And so I got Coach Spoon over to give me a look, you know what I mean? He told me he had a young guy named Larry Hughes coming in, and he had love for me to uh, bring him in, you know what I'm saying, especially he was seeing my scoring. I was a career 20-point in the game aperture and in junior college, so uh, he thought I'd be a good mentor to Larry going into the game. Wow. Okay, so after you got shot, you just done playing basketball? No, I came home, uh, Doc died, you know what I'm saying, shout out to Doc died, you know what I'm saying. He helped me, he rehabbed me, you know what I'm saying. Uh, it took like maybe four or five months to get my full motion in my hand back. And so uh, I'll go back, uh, I moved to Bloomington, you know what I'm saying, to try to work out down there. And so I, I played ball with them a little bit in there, hyper and stuff like that. 
I happen to come back home for another summer, you know what I'm saying, the summer of 96, and I get shot two more times, you know what I'm saying, in both of my legs. So after that, I blew my knee. I couldn't run, you know what I'm saying, I couldn't do nothing. So I didn't get uh, to use my knee probably again until like 99. Wow. 